watching another day at Utopia Farms. It is miserable out here today. It's pouring rain, just about freezing, um, extremely windy. Nobody's going to want to be going out in this today. So today's topic kind of presents itself. We're going to be talking about keeping sheep dry in bad conditions. Anyway, let's get started. So dark in here this morning. Uh, it looks like it looks like evening actually, and you can just see the rain blowing in through here. Well, maybe you can't pick it up, but uh, it sure is. Not very nice, is it, you guys? Be happy you're indoors, though. You're dry. Yes, you're nice and dry. They've all got food. They're cozy anyway. Right now, I'm out in the ram lean-to. Trying to get up the courage to run out there to head over to the coveralls. You can see that uh, the water's starting to bridge up already. These guys are all in their lean-to. Here's Gimme. Hi, Gimli. And here's another little guy. Hi, you're looking for a home. Some of them are eating. Hi, Ferdinand. And others are just taking it easy. Believe me, these guys do not want to go outside today. So, even though these guys are technically outdoor sheep, they do have this lean-to here. If it gets really bad, the, they can go back in there and lay behind the walls. But usually they stay out here unless it's really, really brutal. But uh, they don't want to get wet because what happens in the in the winter time often the snow will just bridge up on their backs and they'll be uh, kept warm but with rain when it gets overly uh, wet the rain will start to sink into their skin and then it's like walking around with a soggy wool sweater on it takes a long time to dry and with the wind it will make them cold. So you ideally want them to be able to seek shelter so that they don't get wet. But these guys are okay here. I, on the other hand, I have to go out there with Katie. You don't want to go out there either, do you, sweetheart? It's nasty. But we're gonna do the mad dash to the coveralls because we've got chores to do. See you guys later. So poor lammies don't go out to play today. I'm having a bit of a battle over the bottles because I only brought four. But they don't want to go out so they're in here. Luckily, it's a big barn. They got a lot of food and it's dry in here. Do you like today? Can I say something? Arnie, Honestly, it's not about you. I gotta give people credit for having sheep outside. But if I had sheep outside today, I'd actually quit farming. I did not want any part of it. These sheep need a little bit of shelter. And today's a washout. The cold, wet, it yeah. causes arthritis. I, I, ju I just went out there to look at the rams, and they're all, they're outdoor sheep technically, but they're all uh, they sheep under sheep. the lean-to. Yeah, they're all, they're all covered. I, I just went through that explanation. You know what these guys want today? Straw. A nice warm bed. <laughs> they want, that's where I want to go too. That's where the, go they go want bed. straw for sure. Seymour, you're a beautiful ram. We have the curtains up today in this barn. Just open a little crack at the top because you can see the water is actually blowing into the barn. We don't want that because it makes the manure pack really mucky and then they're going to lay in that. So we want the sheep to stay dry, 
Dry conditions mean healthy sheep. You don't want their udders laying in moisture. You don't want their hooves walking in damp conditions. All of those things are going to add to problems if you don't get them dry. So Arnie's rolling out some fresh bedding here for the sheep. And I understand the theory behind having sheep outdoors and for sure it's going to create hardier sheep because um, the weak ones will die. But even uh, healthy sheep, if they are left without shelter and they're soaking wet and freezing cold and start the shivering thing, they can only take that for so long. In the wild, animals do not just lay in the middle of a field if it, in bad weather, they're gonna seek out shelter. So as long as you have a place where the sheep can get shelter, they'll be great out there. But the shelter is key. They can tolerate, if it was a rainstorm like this and the next day it was gonna be warm and sunny where they could all dry up, be probably a little better but in the winter time that's not likely to happen so they're gonna start getting a chill they're gonna start shivering and like I said in previous vid videos I've never seen our sheep shiver even in like minus 40 degree temperatures because just a, something as fine as a little tarp keeps them protected from the elements enough that they can easily stay warm in rain, snow, sleet, wind, any kind of condition and the extreme cold, but they do need that shelter. Are you, are, are you gonna, you're probably gonna say exactly what I was saying. No, actually you're never gonna guess what I'm gonna say. What are you gonna you're say? Okay, come on. In the wild, sheep don't grow in North America. Arnie! So that's why we need shelter. You'll, you'll never believe what my talk was about. What? Animals in the wild seeking shelter. Well, if man, if, if man wasn't it's here... It's called great, great Minds, right? <laughs> that's, that's funny because you know he wasn't here, but yeah. And speaking of wild animals and shelter and stuff, you've probably gathered from watching us that we do care about the wild animals here. And right now we're trying to find humane ways to catch our rats because rats left unchecked reproduce astronomically. And uh, right now they're all coming into the barns because obviously there is food here 24 seven for them to eat. There's shelter, which is fantastic. There's water for them to drink. Perfect rat haven. Any wild animal would want to be here. But of course, rats and rodents are gonna be walking in that feed causing um, contamination and prop spreading bacteria and who knows what so we want we don't want to eradicate them but we definitely want to lessen their numbers dramatically but you've also seen in previous videos we have three barn cats we have owls we have hawks all of these creatures eat rats and mice and if we poison them Th those wild birds, possibly Buddy, Scotty, Tom, could also get sick or even die. So we don't want that to happen. So we're trying to find a happy medium so that the wild birds and our domestic cats are okay and the rats can go into nature where they belong. In the forest. So the first half they've got their straw. They're gonna mu be much cozier today on this miserable day. We're gonna roll out this and then uh, somehow we're gonna get into the little lambs with m mayhem probably. So this is old first cut hay. No, it's actually new hay. Okay it's new first cut hay. 
that we it, we have an overabundance and there's a problem with it. So I like orchard grass a lot, but this is what happens with orchard grass when you don't cut it 10 days late. See it's gone kind of the seed. So this is nice, you see? This is the bottom of the orchard grass. And it's too aggressive and I can't get in the field quick enough. So I gotta probably get some hired help to help me. So it's too long. Yes. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, we, it should have been taken in earlier. So again, we had an abundance this year of hay. So better to use it up and use it as bedding. Because if we saved it for a year, then it loses all its nutritional value anyway. So we're going to make use of what we have. The nice thing about the hay is that it rolls out really nicely for the bedding when we if our, I don't know if he's going to use straw or hay on the other side but the straw is much dustier and isn't rolling out anymore it wants to break into a million pieces got a lot of pregnant ewes in here I don't know if you can hear the flapping of that's the flapping of the tarp because of the wind it's a stormy blistery day blustery day Eating that. There's a lot of good grass in there. They're, they're just in great shape. Yeah, they're in good shape. A lot of pregnant ones in here. So if I bought this bale down to my neighbors that has a beef farm with all the beef cows out in the rain right now, they'd eat that bale in about five seconds. For sure they would. It's not bad hay, it's just no. uh, it's just on. just we have a lot. So like I said, we're gonna use it. Big Betty. She's one of the oldest girls in here now. And this one just went and stood in front of her, but you can see she's forming an udder. Big Betty is born the B year and we're going into the L year, so that lets you know how old she is. Yeah. Betty, hi. Do you want to say hello? Do you want to say hello? Hi. You're such a nice girl. You want to stick your head out of there? Eh? You want to stick your head out? Hi, Betty. Hi. She didn't like to be disturbed when she was eating. She says, I'm eating for two. I'm an old girl. Don't interrupt me. An angel. See? Angel and Big Betty both have a friendly spot on their ear. Same ear. All sheep that have a friendly spot on their right ear are genetically friendly, aren't you, Angel? Yeah, you are. And you look a little rotund. Do you have another sweetheart? Let's check, let's check, Angel. Oh, yeah, she's got another two, and that one beside her definitely does as well. So all three, we know for a fact, are pregnant. Last year, Angel was a first-timer, so she had a single beautiful ram that went on to be a breeding ram in Nova Scotia. Big Betty's an older girl, right? One of our oldest in the barn now. But she's always had twins, and I'm expecting Angel will probably have twins this year, too, on her second lambing. Angel! These two are such sweet, sweet sheep. And just look at the size of little Pinky here. She's, she's just a fat little lamb. She is so wide. She's easily a foot wide. I'm not kidding you. That is a big, big lamb. Here it comes. Yeah. These guys are going to get straw. So it's going to be dusty. So we got it in their pen. We got to roll it out into the middle of the pen. Hi, you guys are going to get nice new straw today. Good times for all.
but that big white bale is the most fascinating thing for them right now. We're getting those meat qualities we were looking for in the dorsets. First we take, you can't get through there buddy, you're too chubby. That's it. First we have to get the plastic off. You guys really need to back up because you're too fat. You're too fat. You can't get back that way. Turn around please. Turn around. Ben? Come on you guys, all of you go through. Come on, you can go through. Come on, out of the way now. Come on, there we go, out of the way. Ben? So which one, we go through this side one, eh? So I'm gonna, we're gonna unhook this gate here and I'm gonna scare these ewes out of the way. It doesn't matter about the lambs, but we don't want the ewes running into the creep area because we'll never get them out because there's a grain in there. And the ewes know it too. I push a, I push a bale out, oh, it wants to come back. Physics conspires against Arnie. He's certain of it. Okay, we got the bale into the main barn here without any ewes getting into the creep area because the ewes are very aware that if they get in here when the bale's coming through, that there's grain in here. So we just hold the ewes back before we roll the bale in here. And last time he cut the strings off it kind of like blew up like a balloon and all the straw just came out in one big clump. We're hoping that we'll have some bales that will roll out a bit better. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> oh, but you got a nice little round one up top. Yeah, that's what we should have got this series. Oh, well, you picked it up and took it right to the back. That's the This is the fun part for them, though. Bye, Arnie. Bye, Arnie. What else are you going to do on a day like today? See, the tight little center piece always seems to roll out okay. That's what we wanted the whole bale to do, but it just doesn't work out that way. It works out like this. Look at this. And this is way more fun for the sheep. Look at them. Even the ewe had to get in with it. And there's Peanuts lamb too. You guys. <laughs> What are you guys doing? It's not food. <laughs> Look at them. Oh yeah, I can't pick it up now. <laughs> I really can't pick it up. <laughs> That's terrible. They're like, why why would you want to pick it up? Are you laying in it? Is that really nice stuff? I might just walk away. That's what I said. <laughs> Oh, this is extreme fun for these guys. Arnie doesn't like it, but they do. So you've got to use a fork and pitch it out a bit by hand. But it really doesn't take that long. Luckily, it's light. It's... It's the ultimate in fun times. Come on, move. They ha there's a U even in there. No, it's 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 just way too fine. The real problem is the dust that's now gonna form. 
<laughs> They're actually tripping in it, it's so deep. If they can't go play on the mud pile outside, they're going to play on the straw pile inside. <laughs> oh, look at that guy. He did a leap and a jump and buried his head in the straw. This does spread a lot of it out around here, but of course we want it all over the barn, so it does have to be moved by hand. This one did a skidding slide up to her mom to get some nourishment before she goes to play again. And see, that's a single lamb. So she was nursing on one side and then reached over and nursed on the other side too. nursing back here. I've had the camera rolling the whole time so we can watch how the sheep like this but also to see how long it actually does take to this barn is 140 feet long just trying to see how long it takes to spread the straw out by hand obviously way quicker if it had rolled out but I, I'm thinking it goes pretty quick I'm standing right at the very back of the barn and it's mostly back here. We're way past, we're at the two-third mark where he is right now. And it looks like he might just leave it at that. I don't know. a new one so Arnie's using his ingenuity here the mesh is holding a bunch so the key was to get the lambs off the sleigh <laughs> I'll scare them off and it's the rowdy crew too rowdy crew come on go on come on come on rowdy crew there we go. <laughs> they all thought it was a little sleigh ride. 
Pinky, you're such a chubby girl. Because <laughs> these guys are on a reduced ration, so... And you know why they're clustered over there? Of all things, Arnie's left his pitchfork standing up. And they're hitting it. Stinky on the box. Shall we turn your box back over, guys? There you go. Well, they'll be happy with this today. They can't go outside, but this is a nice environment for them to be in today. Hi. Looks pretty fun, doesn't it? Liking that man quite a bit. He's uh, pretty dorsity looking. He's 32, it looks like. I'm going to have to go look him up. He's got a really nice dorset head. Oh no, 20. 20. Something. 22. Maybe 22. And they got a nice clean barn now. The wind. The wind is extreme today. So I'm in the barn and it's still like this. And <laughs> And we're under a uh, wind warning, and especially for tonight, so we gotta always worry about that when we have bad winds with the barns and stuff, so fingers crossed on that all the time. So as it rains and the wind tries to blow the camera from my hand, we're gonna call this a day. And hopefully it'll be nicer tomorrow. But until then, thank you for watching, and see you tomorrow.